We're in Hale, Michigan. It's the third year. And in that short amount of time, it's become the biggest Trucks Gone Wild event that we do. A couple of young hometown guys with a dream. And they made it happen. And this is what it's resulted in. I mean, this is, this is what it's come down to. I started Michigan Mud Jam because we wanted to have the biggest bog in the country. And, uh... Are you there yet? Uh, it's looking pretty close. It's, it's looking pretty close. You guys are packing like you, you know, going on a temperature. Where, where are you guys going? Like, Michigan Mud Jam, or where, where are you going? Hell yeah. <laughs> well, let's keep it 100, bro. Go hard or go home. That's how we do it. Do it. And we go to downtown Flint because I hear it's nice. Everybody that lives up here says you gotta spend some time in downtown Flint. And we just park somewhere downtown, leave the doors unlocked, and say, hey, we're not from around here. We got a lot of cash in our pockets. We want to have a good time. Turn right onto West Crystal Road. Okay, that's telling us to go somewhere else. Right. You guys down? Okay. No? All right. All right. <laughs> I guess we'll drive to Hale then. Hale. Yeah. Hell yeah. I wanted to do Michigan Mud Jam here in Hill because this is where I grew up, born and raised here, lived here for 33 years, and wanted to bring something good to the community that, that had a positive effect on it. Well, I'm Bob Allward. I own Allward's Market here in Hale. And, uh, we're glad to have you guys here. It's pretty exciting, you know, it brings a lot of people to town. It brings us a lot of a lot of business, a lot of people. We really stock up on things. <laughs> Naturally the beer, booze, and hopefully uh, the guys from down there find us. The businesses love it. I mean it's great for the economy here, you know, directly and indirectly. Anything you sell on a retail basis as far as, you know, food, beer hotel, anything like that, it just drives off it. And even the, the trickle-down economics from those businesses doing better to their employees having more money to spend, it just you know helps out all around. Yeah, my name's Fred Lewis and I'm the Township Supervisor in Plainfield Township here in Hale, Michigan, Iosco County. Everybody that comes to the Michigan Mud Jam seems to come to have a good time. And as long as everybody's having a good time and enjoying themselves and staying within the boundaries, nobody has any real problems with it. In addition to that, I've known that there are some of the people that have come up here that have never known this area of the state of Michigan. And they've gotten to know an area of Michigan that many people don't. I mean, many people know the western side of the state, they don't know the eastern side, and we have as much if not more to offer. The other name that you hear of Hale when people talk about it is the land of 60 lakes. And there's six, about 60 to 65 lakes within like a six mile radius of this community, and they're all resort lakes. All of them are developed as cabins and cottages, the core and backbone of our economy are both the uh, resort areas, the cabins, cottages, and the farmers. It's a lot of fun coming up here to Hale because I feel like the town, for the most part, appreciates what's happening. They may not like it, they may not come to the event, they may not like the noise and the mud or whatever, but they appreciate it economically because, you know, let's face it, their economy up here is based on, on holidays and people taking vacation. This is like another holiday weekend for them up here. And this event, it just changed everything for Michigan. This is the biggest event in Michigan. It's the biggest event in the North. It's, it's one you just don't want to miss. I focus more on Florida events, but I've heard so much about Michigan that I had to come check it out. There's a lot of effort put in here and people coming from all over the country. I mean, these, this, these are our family members, you know? So it's, it's pretty awesome to get all together. And, you know, we all came up Tuesday. The event starts Friday, if that tells you anything about it, you know? So, and the place is packed. This weekend's got a lot going on. The main thing is just open play in the mud for everybody. That's not really a competition, but that's what most people come for. Friday, 9 a.m., total chaos. Pits open, and it's game on.
Okay, the Little Mermaid one is a, a tad creepy. Just saying. These look like trainers. All right, Tom. Yeah. What's happening, dude? This is your creation? Yep. What's the inspiration? What do you call it, actually? Uh... Is it the bra tree, or...? The bra tree. It's all for the kids. It's all for the kids. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Family first. Right. <laughs> mm. I think the kids left this one, actually, if I'm Right, if I'm not yeah. Mistaken. I mean, so... Is it getting attention? Is yes, it getting yes. the attention um, that you want it to get? Yeah, yeah, lots of pictures. Everybody's stopping, taking pictures. I mean, we the girls are donating. Pictures. Yeah, you get some from the event. That's, they're all from here. No, that's impressive. They're all. Do from you here. have to hang one there to kind of like a dollar in the tip jar to get it yeah, started? Yeah, we started by hanging one. The wife hung her first one, and from there on, it just progressed. And this dude, well, well, you are. Listen you, to him. This is lost and found. You. <laughs> that's my wife. <laughs> They can come here and I'll give them a new one. There have been a few lost out here. Yes. yes. You guys, listen, so I'll give I them appreciate a new it. One. You guys are visionaries. Yeah. It's the last year, planning, um, trying to get everything together, working on a truck for weeks on end beforehand, and just a lot of work going into it, and made one trip up here, dropped the one truck off, went back, took another truck, finished it up up here again, went out and blew it up, and yep, it's all one's fun. already home. We did uh, six pounds of lunch meat and haven't touched the sandwich yet. It's been noodle salad. We've been living off noodle salad and beer. <laughs> the 36 jars of moonshine. 200 100 proof jello shots. At least six cases of beer so far. We're so not far. over yet. How many cases of Boone's Farm? I think two or three. Okay. This is a uh, Phil's beer with no worries. <laughs> 14 cases, two days, three people. Necessities are beer, truck, washers, and my mug family. <laughs> Brandon, I don't know if I can pull this off, dude. I don't know if I can get the bottle on the, on the tree. It's worth a try. Nah, screw it. Oh, dude, I'm screwing oh, up your whole beer tree. You had a whole creation. What's going on with this thing? You know, it's, it's a late bloomer. We're going we're gonna to see if she blooms tonight. We're doing our best. <laughs> I mean, she, you see the buds keep falling off, though, so we'll just keep adding to it. and Eventually, she's either going to be in full bloom or shedded. You know what, dude? I have confidence in you and everybody you're with. I think this thing's going to be taller, bigger. This is going to be a, a beer tree you can be proud of tonight. You guys can do it. Yeah. You yeah. got the essentials back there? Just oh, show me what you're working with back well, in the, uh, well, the you know, we, we got We got everything. You know, we got souped up golf carts, you know, a lot of tents, uh, the homemade shack. We got good old glory flying. Got to love America. Yeah. We're yep. all here to have fun. We do. And, you know, the biggest necessity is you need alcohol and hot dogs. You try to sober <laughs> up sometimes. But you just get the alcohol. We got whiskey, beer, anything you want. All right, so here we got our high-class shower. All right, it's made out of two-by-fours and a good old tarp. You start inside with a pallet for a floor, and then you got the garden hose with a spigot on the end. Right now it's kind of wimpy. Now we use the good old American sun to heat up our garden hose, as well as the water just sitting in the tank over the week. Now we're about safety here, so we, we, we use high-quality jumper cables and our water pump off a of bus. You just kind of hook them up here, around like so, somewhere in there. This doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to get a little arc. Safety first, you never want to put a spark by gasoline because that goes boom real fast. Between the two trucks and all the campers, um, we started about three days early to get up here, get everything ready. I probably got about $600 into just food, beer, gas money, 
and getting it up here. A lot of breakfast food. Yeah. A lot oh God, of bacon. Yeah. We, I think we brought like six pounds of bacon. Um, and I think we're about gone already. Yeah, we got one package left oh, for tomorrow. Um, I brought six cases of beer. I know he brought four or five. Um, my buddy Brad brought six. And we're down to about a case piece. Well, we spend about two weeks getting everything ready. Um, I do a lot of get in the camper and go. My parents take care of me. They have this wonderful camper, and uh, my dad works day and night for about a week and a half to get everything ready, get the water in there, get the septic pumped out, the food ready. Um, because we live in Canada, we have to buy all of our food across the border. So after our eight hour drive, we end up in Walmart and do 20 minutes of everybody throwing food into the cart. <laughs> and then we pack up and we head here, which normally arrives us sometime in the middle of the night. So for our showers, the motorhome doesn't hold enough water for the 10 of us to all shower for the weekend. So we have a tent that we shower in and we have barrels of water that go into the shower. We came as a group of, of close to 30 uh, out of New England. And you know, some guys were working on their RVs to get, get us all out here. People were borrowing campers and, and running trucks from Maine down to Massachusetts so that they could all get trailered in together. And uh, you know, we're cooking food and, and, and buying beer by the case. And you know, we actually had to go to two stores for that because we ran out of beer at the first one. But uh, we're prepared, so that's good, you know. And uh, like I said, we came here early on, on a Tuesday, so. You know, fortunately for me, I get to ride along with Dan in, in the RV and I don't have to do a whole lot. Yeah, we just got on the road though. Here we are with Danimal taking the whole crew, Wicked North, out to Michigan Mud Jam. It's been a while, baby. Woo! That's how we do it. It's like 50 bucks a dog to bring him in here, dude. That seems like a lot of money to me to bring the dog in, dude. It did seem like a lot of money at first. Right? But look at this. Beautiful dog. <laughs> He's worth every penny. So wait, oh, what are you telling me? That, that having the dog gets you to see things? It does get you to see things. What have you seen? It gets you to see a lot of boobies. Really? This dog's seen probably every set of boobs here. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. You'll be back next year. For I'm gonna sure. tell Rob to start charging 100 bucks for dogs. Still a deal. All my friends will pitch in ten dollars <laughs> a piece to get them in. <laughs>
The party starts at 7 a.m. when you wake up. Make your wow. first drink, and it's party on. <laughs> over the last couple of years is that people started to show up earlier to the events. You know, they used to come in Friday for a Saturday deal, then Friday became Thursday, and then people would say, well, can I get there on Wednesday? Okay, now, this particular event, they had a line a mile down the road on Tuesday afternoon. Now, the event really doesn't start until Friday, technically, but they all know that the social aspect of it is the fact that it's basically a party all week long. And that party starts as soon as people start rolling in. It goes all day long, it goes into the night, and it's a lot of fun. And this party started Tuesday night. We start right after the year after, we start planning and setting everything up, getting all the girls getting it ready for the party this year, but it takes at least a week to get everything loaded up and everything gathered together. You see it during the day, and you can feel it when you're hanging out. You know people are starting to party. It's happy hours about to hit, and then the sun goes down, game on. speakers and lighting. I mean, we got both the live DJs. It's after midnight productions. They're full on company. We run out of Howell, Michigan. Right now, we're running off of six lasers and projection lights. We got three amplifiers. We got two laptops, four DJ uh, turntables, full system, everything. A lot of people that come to this event, maybe they've never been here before and they think, oh, the sun's going down, the action's done. That's not the case. Uh, this event does what a lot of them do, and when the sun goes down, it's time for tug of war. It's real simple. You've got a strap, you hook the trucks up back to back on a concrete slab, and you let it go. No rules, show off, spin the tires, smoke it up, hopefully you don't break too much or anything. And more bragging rights. Jam, we saw something for the first time a couple of years ago and we really like it. They flooded the tug of war pad and they had about five or six inches of water in it. So when the first trucks went, when the tires were spinning, it was just water everywhere. It was like a mist. It was awesome. You know, the lights were shining through. It looked like a fog machine was blowing and it was just this mist of water.
My favorite part I'm looking forward to is the freestyle competition this year. The team freestyle is going to be awesome. This freestyle is exciting to me because we've been in the game for about 10 years. And so it's hard to come up with something that we haven't seen. But that's exactly what we've got here today because running two trucks at a time on freestyle, it's more excitement, more danger, more everything. You know, just a, a world of things that could go wrong and hopefully won't. Uh, from a spectator's standpoint, which is how I like to look at everything, it's just all new. Dual freestyle is going to be epic. I love running freestyle, and this this is going to be off the chain. Uh, I think the team freestyle is something different. It's unique. Um, we need that. We need different things every year. I mean, if you do the same thing every year, it's, it gets boring. Uh, me and Randy, we're going to open up the show. We're not running for money. We're, if, if we score the highest and take the take the, the top place, we're just going to pay second place. Yeah, we can take the belts, but we'd hand the money over to the second place. And uh, freestyle this year is six thousand dollars for the team. You know, Rob didn't get to run freestyle last year. He was so busy. He caught a lot of flack about it from all the local people. And then when he decided to do team freestyle, he said, "How in the heck am I going to convince somebody to run with me knowing they can't win?" I said, "I'll do it. I ain't scared. Whatever."
new Heldo I trust. Well, James and I are probably the top freestylers in our New England area, so what better team to have? Back home, me and Matt, uh, we're, we're our, each other's biggest competitor, but we're also good friends, help each other out. We have some ideas. We don't want to disclose too much information, but we, we definitely, we've thought about this quite a bit. Now, if we win, the money's great, the belts are great, but it's all about the bragging rights. Mechanical all the way over from Vermont. Take a look at that. Uh, I'm not mud bogging, I'm monster truck, and that's my full time gig. That's what pays me to play with this truck, and it's what keeps me going, and it gives me a little edge because I get more practice than a lot of other people.
My name's Pete Earl. I'm from Florida, Northport. I'm driving the Chase and Paper Toyota. Come all the way up here from Michigan Mud Jam. Be partnering with Dan up in the freestyle. See what we can do. Hopefully we can uh, rock the house and uh, who knows? Carnage may happen, but uh, hopefully not. We've been working for three solid weeks every day, every night to get this truck ready to come here to compete in this team freestyle. To even be part of the freestyling event like this is an honor, you know, to run with trucks like that, you know, it, it'd be sweet to win the belt for you no know, two ways about it.
guy that drives Mean Street, Tim Prakowski, we've been friends for over 20 years, and uh, we've been kind of like back and forth, back and forth. He gets a new part, I get a new part. We kind of like in competition, and this is where we ended up. We're in the mega trucks now, and I couldn't think of a better partner than him because he's a great guy, and we're good buddies, and this is what we do. Tomorrow, teaming up on the freestyle with uh, King Green. It'll be really, really sweet if we can pull it off. A lot of good trucks. I ain't gonna get that cocky. It's uh, a lot of stiff competition, but uh, we'll try it and give it hell. Uh, my partner is Twitty, um, the Wheelie King, and uh, we've just been good friends. And uh, as soon as I heard about it, I called him and asked him, 
and uh, he was all on board to do it. I mean, he's beat me, I don't know how many times. I beat him once or twice, but he's beat me more than I beat him, so we team up. If you can't beat him, join him. for it with the judges. They were based on the team scenario. So they said, look, we had to look at the team. We had to look at who was all out there the longest, and we had to look at who was out there running the hardest the whole time. And they have, the majority have signed in, and the winners of this particular freestyle, Michigan Mud Jam, and the Tag Team Freestyle Champions of the World, SCS Craig and AJ from Bottoms Up. 
Congratulations, guys. I love wearing the belt, but one thing I like more is giving them away to the winners out here this afternoon, man. Craig, dude, that's yours, brother. AJ, this one is for you, dude. You guys can wear them, hang them on the shoulders, whatever you want to do. <laughs> guys, on a side note, my favorite part about this is, as far as being in the winner's circle at a Truck Skull Wild event, this is the first time for all of us, so congratulations, brother. Yep. You were all over the place. Yep. That keep cool. momentum up. I mean, we had some engine problems at the beginning of the week, but we took care of them. We just, you know, ran it. Did awesome. AJ, dude, great job, great job. Craig, bring it in here, dude. Act like we like each other. <laughs> Listen, dude, the whole deal was it was a team event, and that's what you guys had to do. You had to both survive, and you did it. And you had a bad, wobbly leg there, too. But, man, you brought it home. Yes, we did. Uh, luckily, my crew was able, we broke it bogging the day just for the fun of it. Right. We uh, knocked the spindle off. We were able to weld the spindle back on and put it back together. Uh, unfortunately, in, in my freestyle there with AJ, the kingpin gave up, but we kept pushing through. Right. Luckily, AJ was able to hang it out, and I was able just to keep on churning mud, so we were, we were able to be a team. Were you watching him oh, when I you were stuck? Because absolutely. you were skipping all over the place, dude. It was awesome, cross rutting the jumps, the whole yeah, deal. Keep the momentum up, keep yeah. the crowd guessing. And, dude. and it worked, brother. Yeah. You guys are the tag team champions of the Trucks Gone Wild World, dude, and the belts look great on you. Congratulations. I got one more thing for you, I know. Because not only do you get the belts, but you get some cash, you get the bragging rights, so here you go. There's $3,000 for you and $3,000 for you. I hate giving that away, right? Man, I gotta give the belts away, I gotta give the cash away, and you guys, man, awesome, awesome job. You had a stacked field of competitors and brought it home. Awesome, dude. Congratulations, brother. Thanks. Thanks, sir. We're doing here a wedding today for Jim, Spider Monkey No, and Crystal Vermillion. I'm here to hook him up, I'm here to hitch him up, I'm the wedding officiant. I'm the minister of mud, but as you can see, I'm 420 friendly. Minister of bud, absolutely. I'm a medical, card carrying, weed smoking mother. We were about to have a wedding right here at Michigan Mud Jam, and evidently, I'm walking the bride down the aisle. What do you think about that? I think it's pretty awesome for Jim No Slayer. I love it, dude. I'm so excited. This is pretty cool. There's a ton of trucks. It's laid out. Everybody's excited about this. This is awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. very cool. Thank you guys for letting me be a part of Thank it. Thank you. I think it's awesome. Now, Jim, I ask you, you take Crystal to be your wife, will you love her, honor her, comfort her, and keep her in sickness and health, forsaking all others for as long as you both shall live? Uh, I do. Okay, Crystal, you take Jim to be your husband. Will you love him, honor him, comfort him, Keep him in sickness and in health, as long as you both shall live. By the power vested in me in the state of Michigan, I pronounce you husband and wife. Jim, you may kiss your bride, my brother.
I am the one and only Air Boss, Mo Money Mower Sports. Me and my buddy Tom, we both used to have mud trucks and stuff like that. It's all good and fine, but this sport's escalating so much that we just had to change it up a little bit, do something different. So we decided to do this for mowers. The one and only Air Boss. My mower is a 1968 Bolins, it's cut above the rest. We got fuel injection, nitrous, five inch exhaust, 44 tires. It's the biggest, baddest mower out there. The one and only Air Boss. That is the Mud Cadet. Tough Cadet lifted up, it's got a three cylinder Kubota diesel, lifted 37 swampers. The baddest diesel tractor out there. Definitely a tension horse. It, it just draws a crowd because no one's seen anything like it.
paddle boating, baby, in the rain in Michigan for the third year in a row. Put toast to Matt on his birthday. Hey, Matt Still. Just want to say thank you for all you do for all of us, and uh, happy birthday, man. I wouldn't want to celebrate your birthday with anybody else other than you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you. Great to have you again. Well, right. oh, Maybe I'll do more than one. for the rest of my life up here with you guys. Happy Thank birthday. you guys.